tops. Now I've already done the white ones previously using white chocolate melted with silver glitter or edible glitter and I've also done a blue fondant snowflake on them. These ones have already been done and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the opposite. So we're going to use blue chocolate and I've got some lovely white glitter and I'm going to press out some white fondant snowflakes to stick on those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt the blue chocolate and I'll be back in a minute to start dipping the cake pops which I prepared earlier. Okay, as you can see now my blue chocolate candy melt from Wilton is now lovely and smooth and melted. What I did is I microwaved it for a minute on medium heat. Mine's a 1200 watt microwave. It comes out still looking like chocolate buds but just keep stirring it because you can feel the heat in there and it will all melt on its own. So after you've done this, you're going to be stick, tip the stick in the melt, like such, and you're going to stick it in the cake pot. You're not going to coat, coat them all straight away. I wanted to make sure that the colour was right on this one, so that's why I've done that before. What you're going to do is you're going to put the stick into each of the cake pops, not all the way down, quarter to half the way through the cake pop. And then you'll put these in the freezer to let the sticks set. And it will make it a lot easier when it comes time to tip it in to the chocolate. Now while my cake pops are setting in the freezer and making it nice and hard, I might as well multitask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the snowflakes that are going to get stuck on once the chocolate is all done. Now I've bought myself a tub of satin white or satin ice ready to go fondant. This is in white. Probably not the best to use a wood warming rolling pin but my only plastic one at the moment is gigantic so I'm going to go with this obviously you saw me put some icing sugar on the pin again that's just going to protect it from sticking while I roll it out so I have not invested in a proper fondant rolling pin yet now I'm going to go quite thin on these because with the blue ones a few of them were a bit thick and I think they just look out of proportion. So I'm going a bit thinner. Hopefully that's going to lift. Alright, yes, it is lovely. Okay, now I have a lovely snowflake cutter, you can see here, that I bought off eBay. They come in three different sizes, this is a small, and it makes a lovely snowflake shape, so I'm just going to push it down. Pull the cutter off and it's still stuck in there, but they're handy little cutters now because it will pop it out. So not perfectly, and I've done that as an example, but you can see once it comes out and I maneuver it, it's a lovely little snowflake. Well, this one has a bit of a shine on it because I washed the cutter before and it clearly has not dried properly so that one's a bit of a waste one I'm afraid so I'll get some paper towel never mind the noise just knocking things over give it a bit of a dry And try again. That's why we have lots of fondant. So I'm going to pop it in and then I'm going to put it down on here to pop it in. And there it's popped out on my tray which you could see if my camera wasn't stationary. Let's see if I can get down on there. It's 
the little snowflake sitting and waiting for its brothers and sisters. So we'll pop it back up. That was a silly thing to say, it's fondant. Anyway, it's getting late in the evening, so I'm starting to ramble. I'm going to do another 11 of those. And then put them aside for when I'm ready to add them to my cake pops. Okay, our cake pops are ready to go again. They're nice and hard with the bottom stuck in with the stick. Now I've just been playing with this one because I haven't actually used these candy melts before and they're a bit thicker than just using chocolate. I thought it was great that it comes out you know, ready to buy in the colour that I wanted. But I have melted this for another 30 seconds on medium to try and get it a bit thinner and it hasn't happened. So it's not just a case of just dipping it in like I did with the chocolate. So it's a little bit fiddlier and next time I think I just get white chocolate and melt it and tint it myself. However, I will persevere because the colour is perfect. What I've done is I've covered this over and I've used the spoon to smooth out the edges. It's going to be a little bit rough, but now I'm just going to sprinkle the white glitter, like snow, over the top. See, now it's a lovely shimmer. Hopefully if you can see it. It's got the little glitter to it. And then to top it off, we're going to put a snowflake on, which isn't going to work using the knife, so I'm going to have to use my fingers. Placement purposes. This one's a little bit messy. Don't judge me. But there it is with the snowflake on. So it's glittery, it's blue, it's wintry, and I'll do another one with a better snowflake end, I promise. Give one more chance. I have 12 to practice with. So what I'll do again is I'm going to give this a stir, mix the ball in, and I'm going to use the spoon to help me scoop, because if you try to twist it in the bowl, the stick will become unstuck and you'll end up with a cake pop ball in amongst everything. So I'm going to have it, let it lift it out as well. Scoop around the excess and shape the parts that are missing the chocolate. So as I mentioned, this one's a little bit fiddlier and I would recommend just melting some white chocolate and tinting it yourself until you get the colour that you want. Although I'm not really sure what that would do to the flavour. I'll have to try that another time and let you know. So I'm going to shape it as spherical and neat as I can without taking it all off. I quite like the patterns that the spoon's making in it actually. Makes it look planetary. Not that that's what I'm going for, but I still like it. So I'm going to cover it over like so. I'm going to sprinkle it with my white, lovely, edible, glittery powder. I've got a good coating. And then I will put it down. I will work one of my snowflakes off properly that's better and then I will place it upon the chocolate look at that so much better when you're not trying to be fancy who said fingers were good for nothing and then I have a lovely snowflake on there and that's where I am, which looks a bit like a starfish when you hold it that way. But there's the cake pops. Okay, 
here is the finished product. Here is the cake board that we made with the Elsa picture, all sprinkled with the silver and the blue, and it's all filled up with the cake pops that I've made. Now, I was a little bit worried that they weren't all going to fit, so I've had to squish them all a bit together. But I'm very happy with the end result, and I believe my daughter will be too. It's really quite easy. I'm quite a beginner, as you could tell from watching me decorate these cake pops. But if I can do it, you can do it. So, you know, the most amazing thing is that there's all these cutters out of all these different shapes these days. So if you have a particular idea in mind, have a look around for cutters. You know, there's no way I could have cut snowflake shapes myself. I'm not that artistic. Cutters are the way to go. But I'm happy with my frozen cake pops and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching.